All right, boys and girls, here's chapter six of Chomps, Flea, and Gray Cat, that's me. And remember, Chomps just jumped into the brand new car full of mud, and I don't think the mama's going to be too happy. We got our first ride in the new Range Rover that day. Trouble was, we were in cages. When Mama saw Chomps slopping mud all over the front seat of her brand new SUV, she went crazy. She grabbed Chomps off the seat and put him back in his pen. She went to the barn and started tossing stuff around. I ran to the garden and hid near the fence behind the bushes. When Mama finally came out, she had two big cages. She wiped the mud off the little dog and crammed him into one of them. Then she started looking for me. I flattened myself to the ground. I had a bad feeling about this. At first she called out real sweet like, Here kitty kitty. As the time went by, she began to call me by name. Gray, get over here you mangy cat. If it hadn't been for Chomps barking and looking toward the bushes, I would have been safe. The little dog stood up in the cage and pointed his black nose straight at me. When Mama came toward the bushes, I tried to sneak off, but she was quick and grabbed me by the scruff of the neck. The first thing I knew, I was in the other cage, right next to Chomps. Mama shut the back door of her new vehicle and we were off. Gray, why didn't you warn me she was going to be so mad? I've been warning you all day. Who thought you would jump on the seat of her brand new car? What were you thinking? Chomps' ears were down against his head. It smelled so good. I wanted to see where the delicious odor was coming from. I didn't think they would take us away from our home. I sat on my haunches as I nervously washed my paws and whiskers. You've done it now. We're probably going to the pound or the vet. I told you to get back to your pen before they saw us, but no, you had to leap in and get a good look for yourself. Gray, what are we going to do? I don't want to go away. I like it here with Mama and Daddy and you and Callie. I batted at the door with my paws. I grabbed the metal with my teeth, but it wouldn't open. There's nothing I can do. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. The little dog whined as we drove down the road. I finished my bath and tried to relax as we continued our ride. It was no use. When the car finally stopped, Mama picked up my cage and Daddy carried Chomps inside a brick building. Hi, Amy. We've got two wild animals for you. It seems that they can't stay close to home and you have, and have managed to make messes of themselves. Gray needs a flea bath and Chomps needs something. Can you help us? A pretty face peered into my page, into my cage. Hello, sweet kitty. What have you been doing to get yourself into such trouble? She looked into Chomp's cage, smiled, and opened the door. She pulled him out gently. What a precious pup. I haven't seen a white Scotty in a long time. He's wonderful. Chomp smiled back at her. The sweet tone of her voice made him wiggle so much I thought he was going to knock himself apart. The woman looked up at Mama. They don't seem too wild. I think we can get them under control again. Do you want a puppy cut for this little guy, or do you think he's ready for a grown-up look? He thinks he's grown up. He might as well look like a big boy. Give him the works. Mama and Daddy walked out. I pushed my face against the door of the cage to see where they were going. Mom and Daddy got into the big car and drove away. I tried to figure out what was going, what was going, what to do next. Okay, Chompers, I have to put you back until I finish Roscoe here. We'll get you pretty quick. The girl called Amy shoved Chomps back into the cage and rubbed his face before closing the door. She pushed our pens closer together. A big black dog stood on a table at the back of the room. He held himself tall and proud. Amy took clippers and started snipping the hair off the dog. She left big pom-poms of curly fur around the bottoms of his legs, his tail, and around his chest. She took a white hair dryer and fluffed him all over. Then she put a big red bow in his hair and painted his toenails with red fingernail polish. Are you watching, Chomps? I snickered. That's what you're going to look like when she finishes with you. I stretched out and folded one paw over the other. No way! Nobody's going to do that to me. That dog looks silly. I'm going to growl and bark so that she will leave me alone. Jeff, will you get Gray and put him in the dip? Amy called to the man in the back. Sure thing. Come here, Gray. A dark-haired young man with a black fuzzy caterpillar on his upper lip peeked in at me. So he's got a mustache. He bent down to see where I had gone. I decided it was hair on his upper lip because it didn't try to run away when he talked. Come here, kitty. I hissed at him. He just smiled and said, Ah, come on, Gray. Be a sweet kitty. Before I even had time to blink, his huge paw darted in and grabbed me by the scruff of the neck and pulled me out of the cage. Come on, kitty. This won't be so bad. 
I couldn't escape without using my claws, and I was already in too much trouble to try that. So I just dangled there in midair. After Amy put the big dog in a cage, she went after Chomps. Jeff took me to a big bathtub full of water. I hate water. I began to squirm even harder. Je Jeff just held on tighter and plopped me in the tub. Meow, I howled. Jeff took a cup and poured water over my head and back. My hair was dripping and I was miserable. I couldn't get my ears to stand up straight. My whiskers drooped. He put some stuff onto my fur and started rubbing it all over me. Getting rubbed was okay. If it hadn't been so soggy and wet, I might have enjoyed it. Finally, he rinsed me off and put me back in the cage. I shook myself and tried to get dry. Before I could even get my whiskers straightened out, Amy took me from the cage. The hairdryer made a loud whizzing sound. I didn't like that. It blew hot air in my ears and made them twitch and wiggle. I didn't like that either. Amy rubbed and fluffed me. That wasn't too bad. Then she got a soft brush and stroked from my ears to the tip of my tail. That felt pretty good. In fact, it almost made me forget about the noisy hairdryer. When I was finally dry, she clipped the ends of my long claws. I didn't care for that, but it didn't hurt at all. Then she took tiny rubber bands and tied them onto my hair. One was right above my eyes and the other was near my tail. I couldn't see what was on my head, but a bright pink bow was attached on my other end. Once back in the cage, I grabbed it with my teeth trying to get it loose. I spun around until I wore myself out. It was stuck tight. I flopped down and looked out at the ed out, uh, out the end of, end of the cage. Chomps was on the table and Amy was clipping his hair just like she had the big black dog. Told you so, I meowed to Chomps. This isn't so bad, Chomps yipped at me. She's very gentle and I like the feel of the clippers on my skin. Besides, now Mama can't pull so much when I get burrs in my fur. Don't look now, dog, but she is leaving a bunch of hair along the bottom, where you usually get burrs anyway. I don't care. This feels good. Amy used scissors to clip the fur on his face. She left lots of hair across the top of his eyes and around his mouth. Amy whispered sweet doggy talk to him while she clipped. What a lovable little puppy you are, Chompies. You're such a nice little fellow. You can come in any time. What a sweetheart. His tail wagged so hard it shook him clear up to his pony, pointy ears. I couldn't take any more. I curled up in a ball and tried to catch a quick cat nap before I got sick. The sounds of barking dogs, clippers, and hair dryers were soon gone from my head as I dreamed of mice racing away from me. We have chompers in gray ready. Amy stood near the front of the shop talking to herself. She held a white thing against the side of her head. I had seen Mama do the same thing, but for the life of me, I couldn't figure out why she had so much fun talking to herself. Yes, you can pick them up any time. So she's talking on the phone. Chomps was in the cage next to me, but I couldn't see anything but some white fur. It wasn't long before Mama came in to get us. Jeff carried Chomps' cage to the car and Mama carried mine. Before she closed the back door, she stopped and looked at us. Chomps, you look so grown up. What a big boy you are. I could hear his tail hitting the side of the cage. Aren't you cute, Gray? Did you enjoy your beauty shop visit? You look so pretty. I rubbed my shoulder against the cage. Mama touched my head with the tips of her fingers. Let's go home, kids. When we got to the house, Mama put my cage on the ground and opened it so I could step out. She carried Chomp's cage to the backyard. Daddy had found the place where we dug under the fence. Big chunks of rock filled the hole. When Mama finally let Chomp's out, I couldn't believe my eyes. Even though he had less, lots less hair, he somehow looked big and fluffy. He had a cloth tied around his neck, and he had a matching bow tied to his tail. I had to laugh at the sight before me. I don't know what you're laughing at, Gray. You've got a big pink bow right in the middle of your head. It matches the one on your tail. Chomp sat down with his back half. His front legs were still straight. His tail wagged behind him. I tried to look at the pink bow on my head. I reached up with my paw trying to shake it loose. It was stuck tight. I couldn't get to the one on my tail. I shook my body and walked around to the front porch. I needed a real cat nap. Callie peeked open one eye when I was almost to the swing. What happened to you, Gray? I hopped up on the chair and stretched out. Nothing, why? You look nice with the pretty bow in your hair. Have you been to see Amy and Jeff? Yeah, how did you know? I've been there before. They were nice to me. Were you nice to them, Gray? Of course I was nice. What are you thinking? I have manners. I know how to act. Well, you sure look pretty, Callie smirked at me. I hopped off the chair. This was bad. I smelled funny. I had bows in my fur, and Callie was making fun of me. I decided to go out in the pasture to roll in the dirt. 
On my way past the barn, a snickering and giggling sound stopped me dead in my tracks. Two mice stood there. One pointed at me and held the other paw over his mouth. The other held his stomach. It was more than I could take. Ears flat against my head, I charged them. I couldn't do anything about chomps making fun of me, and I couldn't do anything about Callie's smart remarks. But no way was I taking this treatment from a couple of scrawny rodents. When the two saw me racing for them, they darted through the crack in the barn door. I chased after them and squeezed through. Then I stopped. The two mice were no place to be seen, but the mama's new car was in there. She was so proud of it, I guess she decided to keep it inside and out of the weather. What stopped me was a sound. It was a scraping, scratching, gnawing sound. It came from under Mama's new Range Rover. Uh-oh. And we know what the word gnawing means. That was one of our vocabulary words when we were back at school. It means chewing. So let's see if you can figure out what's going on. <laughs>